Let's talk about how this entire process has evolved. For many of you that are new to this industry, it just looks like something we just we just do. And that's true. We just do it, but we, we have, didn't always do it quite the way we do now. This process evolved uh, many, many years ago. Back in the 80s, uh, as rock and roll band musicians discovered that there was money in merchandising, uh, they had uh, pretty rudimentary pretty rudimentary black shirt prints. In fact, I, this is a shirt I bought at just a uh, Hot Topic, and it has kind of that that old older look, vintage look, yes, distressed look, but it still has that color, color, color look, not photorealistic. That was how shirts were done in the early 80s, late 70s. In fact, in the late 70s, shirts were done using what's called a litho transfer, where it was a rubbery photographic image on a shirt that was very rubbery and heavy. And if you wash it too many times, you may have a block of white ink on your shirt with the image not on it. But that was really kind of the, the birth of rock and roll transfers, high resolution, photorealistic images on black shirts. So as it evolved uh, back in those days, and this is just a little bit of history that you can just tuck away, back in those days it was all done in what's called a process camera. This was a, a big device that you would put film in here and put your negative in there and take a shot of a, of a picture and run it through a processor. And uh, to do this kind of, not this kind of separation, but the real high-end photorealistic images required Dozens and dozens of camera shots. Now those would have been a few mouse clicks in Photoshop. So when, of course, when Photoshop came out, we all go, yay, this is really cool. But in the old days, it was in the camera, and we would take a, a, a thing called ruby lith. Ruby lith was red masking film that you would lay on top of a, a camera shot or of a, or of a drawing of the image, and you would, with a razor knife, an X-Acto knife, cut around the areas you want to keep or mask around areas, put that back in the camera, do a reversal, which would give you just the area you wanted. And so it required a lot of thinking, where you'd have to think, okay, I need the skin tone here, I need the football helmet here, I need the red for that. And it required dozens and dozens of camera shots, days in the dark room, and then go to press and say a prayer and hope it worked. And if it didn't work, it wouldn't be like it is now, where you can come back to Photoshop, bring up the image and boost the red a little bit, I'll put a new film. Not in the old days. The old days you come back and have to recut a mask, redo the camera shots, a lot of work. But that's how it evolved. It evolved, actually, dark shirt, high-end printing pretty much evolved uh, through sports printing. In fact, a company called uh, Salem Sportswear was one of the first companies that offered uh, shirts in the locker room or shirts when the team won the Super Bowl or whatever, and it really evolved from that. And so those guys, the original shirts were all done in the camera, all done where the artist did a complete rendering of the image, and then somebody sat there and just spent hours trying to mask off areas and kind of pulling the colors out that way. And in their mind's eye, thinking, okay, this is gray on the film, but that's going to be yellow ink when I print it. Took a lot of work. Back in 1994, I came out with a kit called Dark Shirt Printing Made Easy. And uh, the joke of the kit now, as I think back, was you got... Uh, uh, three and a half inch floppy disks with the kit. That was what the work files were on. Uh, you got VHS tapes. So this this dates me a little, but it shows that it's evolved. In fact, back in 1986, when my wife and I wrote uh, the large thousand page book called the Garment Encyclopedia of Garment Printing, which is out of print. There was a whole chapter on dark shirt printing, showing cutting overlays and showing how to complete chapter on on dark room and on the camera, showing how to cut the overlays and cut the masks and how to do dark shirt separations back then. Of course, then Photoshop came out, and again, I came out with my dark shirt kit, showed how to do separations in Photoshop, uh, but it kind of evolved that way where it became easier for the masses to do it who maybe didn't have a dark room or didn't understand the dark room, and we would do it in just a uh, Photoshop. Then the automated separation programs came out, uh, like my fast films, I came out with that in 1999, and that sped the process up. We're going to talk about automated programs, but I strongly feel that with or without an automated program, you need to know how to do the separation, because automated programs it only gets you so close, and then you've got to do some of the, 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 the hard work yourselves. So the process has evolved over the years from very simple, uh, uh, crazy, very cartoony looking images to full color, realist, full realistic images that started with the camera and then evolved as Photoshop came out.